What is up, everybody? So it's been a hot minute since we posted some hard body stuff. Um, if you haven't noticed, we've been posting some shorter things, but really specific individual tasks like the cooling system, the fuel system, wiring, exhaust. Um, we've been putting those into some shorter content just because some people don't feel like watching the longer videos. Totally fine. So you can check those out in the shorts. You can also look at TikTok or Instagram. Uh, we'll have them up there as well. But we figured we'd take a second to kind of step back and uh, do a little bit longer uh, video here just to go through where everything's at and kind of everything that we've worked through to this point. Um, we're actually really close to firing this thing while also being really far away. I'll show you what we got going on. So first things first, in the engine bay, we've gone ahead and uh, we got a ton of ICT billet stuff in here. Um, we've also got some Amazon stuff. So I uh, got the coils on. Uh, you can see we have the harness in there um as well as the injector harness and all that stuff um so that's all hooked up on the vehicle so we also got a new um the stock this is actually a stock nissan throttle cable for the hard body uh the original had been shortened for the small block so we're gonna be replacing that here uh pretty soon got that stock part in it's gonna be plenty long enough you can see there so we'll just have to get a little bracket hooked up here just so everything works got a nice big Nice big throttle body there. Um, Got to do a couple changes here. We noticed that's not going to be so great. <laughs> so um, I might have to put a longer line on here to, to get the fuel line through from rail to rail without hitting the throttle cable. Um, another thing we went ahead and worked on here. This is kind of mocked up right now. It's got a math sensor, but um, we we wanted some form of an intake that wasn't just a filter right here on top of the radiator. So went ahead did a 90, um, ran some four inch pipe down here, and then we went and bent up this. Um, right now it's made out of 22 gauge, but you can see we uh, trimmed it out to. It's got a little tab down here. Also, this filter is just something we have left from the small block turbo build. It will have a full filter on it, but either way, this little heat shield is is blocked off essentially that fender space and we've got a ton of areas for airflow to come in from outside the engine bay uh, wanted to do this just so the thing had some cold air to breathe and it wasn't just sucking hot air from wherever under here um so we will be i'm going to be making a template out of this and essentially i'm going to bend the same thing on 16 and i'm going to put some tabs on it here See, see that just so we can bolt it um to the stock bowl so it's nice and oem fit quote unquote and uh yeah so just a couple things we got to do with that just make sure everything looks good one out of 16 then we'll get that powder coated i mentioned the fuel system a little bit ago so we we went ahead and we have that pretty much all hooked up in the engine bay we've got the regulator got the rails like i said got a little bit of work to do under here uh, for these so we can move our throttle cable um our rails on this amazon intake <laughs> they come with some tabs that don't really make sense as far as securing the rails down so we do have an extra pack of uh, little l brackets unfortunately they're slightly too narrow for the hardware so we've got to either uh, take these down to uh, Stapleton's, which is our local engine shop, and see if they can throw these on a mill and just kind of open that up for us. Or we'll just see if we can run a drill bed or sand it. You can see our return line running down the back side of the block there. It drops under here through the fender, and it actually runs along the frame here and back up through the bed. Um, this is a 10 foot section. Uh, this is usually what they sell them, was not long enough to make it to the return. so. Got some more ordered, uh, not here yet, but once that's here, we'll just throw some fittings on and run it back to the return. Feed line, pretty similar story. Come down through the fender here. You can sort of see it back there. Runs down and out, and then down along the frame. And comes up over here. Should have enough to make that work. Got our fuel pump, our fuel filter, and our fuel tank. Uh, saw some comments questioning, you know, why not use the stock system? The the simplicity is obviously we took out the stock system when we did the small block build. Uh, the other element of that is where we can locate the weight as well as accessibility. So by putting everything in here like this, 
Um, yeah, it's exposed. Yeah, it takes up bed space. I mean, this is a burnout truck. That's its sole main purpose. The other thing is that we can work on all of this. So most of these fittings, will, pretty much all these fittings will be accessible. So if we have leaks or air pockets, we're going to know. Um, that leaves the fittings. Essentially, all of our fittings from the tank, you know, up through the feed line into the engine bay are super accessible. So anything goes wrong or anything's not working, we can work on it. So that's one of the primary reasons. So talked about wiring a little bit ago. So we've been working on the wiring. We'll go ahead and put the link to this, this little harness in here. We went through some minor bugs with it, but either way, harness is working out. I drilled a two inch hole there, uh, ran the harness through. Everything's pretty much hooked up as far as injectors and the coils go. Uh, we've got our throttle position and those se those sensors hooked up on here. Um, everything kind of run under. So really we're just talking about like oil temp, coolant temp, um, our O2s. Uh, that's all kind of hidden in the back there. And then just grounds and then uh, the fuel pump stuff. So, and I think the other thing is just hooking up the fan, which I think we have the fan and the water pump set up to go. Fans in a box. But either way... Um, Wiring is relatively simple so far. The main problem is this over here. So wiring, yeah, don't pay attention to that. Wiring comes through through that two inch hole and we've got it set right here. Um, we were originally gonna mount the ECU somewhere in back here, but the harness is not long enough to do that. So what we're probably gonna do is bring it over and run the line through there and then cut out a section of this glove box so that we can mount the uh, ECU, stock truck ECU in there. That's the plan for now. Um, it's kind of one of the last wiring steps because as long as everything's accessible, it makes it easier for us. Got our nice little, you know, eBay ignition here that we'll be wiring everything through. So it's nice and accessible. Got a shifter in. Like we said, all the mechanical stuff is done except for the drive shaft. Speaking of which, the nice part of the drive shaft is it only has to be lowered or shortened like three or four inches. We should be good to go. So just got to shorten that. It should clear everything. If not, we'll make it clear. <laughs> Next thing on the list is exhaust. So we'll also put a link to these headers um, in the description. These actually worked really well for the driver's side, uh, the little kit that it came with. Passenger side, we knew this was going to happen, right? Because the motor, the whole drive line on this truck is like two to three inches towards the passenger side. So that benefits us because our steering shaft and everything, good to go. We don't have to worry about that. Um, passenger side, however, when the headers come through, you can see they're they're pretty dang close to the frame and, and all that suspension goodies, but it fit. The actual header, quote unquote, fit. The only problem was the flange on the bottom of the header. So what we did, and I'll kind of overlap some of this footage here, we went ahead and lopped off the header Pretty much where it met the collector right at the bottom of the collector and um, we went ahead and welded everything from there cleaned it up real nice so we had a nice little um, section that kind of curved around the frame here so we got our our ideal spot there's like essentially the frame the body and the starter are all in the same place so it comes down and comes up a little bit it's like a little s bend then we have our flange right there i'll head under to show you what we got going on so underneath the truck here, um, you can see you know, we're going to be upside down depending on how I edit this. <laughs> I'm upside down filming this, but this right here is the driver's side. This is the passenger side. So, you know, a lot of this was we could go completely under the frame and that would leave the exhaust quite a bit lower than anything else on the truck. The other issue with that is the, you know, if you have to work on anything, you'd have to take the exhaust apart. So... That would be pretty annoying. We have to work on this pretty often. Good possibility we have to service the trans, replace the trans, engine, all that stuff. So the easier it is to work on, I think the better. It takes some time to make it more accessible. Then you're going to be, you know, you're going to be better off in the end. So right now everything is pretty much tacked together. We don't have any final welds on this, but you can see driver's side um, comes down or O2 bung, that little collector there. And then we're running that pretty much away from the body in, in this 
mount. You can see it didn't really have a spot to go through here. So we're running that up along the trans and it's gonna come up here. And when it comes up there, we're gonna be putting a V-band here so we can basically section the exhaust here and run it back out the back. What's gonna happen after this is it's gonna run from that pipe, it's gonna come here, because this is our parking brake lever. It's gonna 90 through here, this kind of open spot. And then we're gonna run it out kind of the stock position and out through the back so we can shoot it out in front of the rear wheel. And you can see here, I'll head back to the front, passenger side, a little bit more figured out even though it was originally the problem child, but you know, once again, really tight with the frame there. Um, what we've done is essentially created, come down, we're a little bit further back than we wanted to be. So we've got a little bend here, then running it into a slip connector. That's so that we can just section it here because it's a really specific fit. So we'll have a clamp here. This is a just a little simple S, S bend. And that gets it the height it needs to come up over the uh, cross member here. When it comes up over that cross member, we'll have another um, clamp that essentially puts this right next to the drive shaft and it runs it straight all the way out to the back to where we get it in front of the rear tire. So once again, you can kind of see that um, running through here. So it comes up, fits under there, goes up over it. And then it's running straight out through the back. So a little bit more work to go on those. Got to, you know, finish welding everything, cut that off and finish up the exhaust. But it's not a huge concern as long as we can run it out the bottom, get the thing going. So this is kind of like the final, the final process we'll be going through. Um, we're just kind of getting a head start on it now. So besides that, um, I'm just going to get a shroud for that new fan on uh, this radiator. It's what we use with a small block. Should be fine. Um, I think I'm going to work on something a little bit better here to keep this secure, keep this front end together instead of like the random bolts that we had. So stay tuned on that one um, because most of you who are building these are going to chop that core support the same way. So kind of alluded to in a way, but we're going to be pulling the interior out of this thing. I mean, it's nasty. So we're going to be pulling the seats, uh, ripping the, the freaking padding and all that shit out. I and mean, you can see it's just gross. It's shot. It's going to be easier with just being a tub. So that's just a minor thing. Then it won't look like such a freaking mess in here. Um, we might be making a new gauge cluster. Um, should be too hard. This was thrown together pretty quick. Not that it's bad, but won't hurt to have something a little cleaner. Um, a little bit more suited to what we're running. But yeah, that's that's pretty much it. I mean, that's I think I covered everything there. So that's all the basic stuff that we've worked through um, and that we need to do moving forward. And just let us know, man, we were, we were making longer content on this build for the YouTube channel. And then we just tried out some of the short form stuff and the vertical element and realized that a lot of what we were making was really cuttable. I mean, it was just footage of us doing something. And when you're working on a swap like this, it's not necessarily groundbreaking stuff that you're working through. So we didn't know if that was, you know, just boring or that was kind of wasting time for people. Uh, we had really good reaction to the shorter content going over the specific items um, as we worked through them. So let us know if you want to see longer form stuff. Uh, we can definitely make that happen. If you want to see more of that short form stuff, uh, let us know as well. But that's going to be it for the recap on this thing. You know, we're pretty motivated to work on it. Just waiting for parts has been uh, the, the constant thing anyways. But either way, until the next one, guys.